Welcome to episode 137 of George's Random Astronomical Object. Every episode, I run a random number generator to select random astronomical coordinates in the sky, and I then search for an astronomical object near those coordinates and talk about what makes the object so interesting to astronomers. So, I will now run the random number generator. The generator has returned the coordinates of 12 hours, 20 minutes, 17.7 seconds for ascension, and plus 75 degrees, 22 minutes, 15 seconds declination. This episode's coordinates point to the elliptical galaxy NGC 4291, which sits at a distance of 85.8 million light years or 26.3 megaparsecs within the constellation Draco as seen from Earth. Note that I don't mock the constellation Draco like I mock other constellations, and that's because Draco is a cool constellation with a cool name that actually sort of looks like the dragon it's supposed to represent, even though it could be thought of as a dragon with a small body and a very long tail. Anyway, NGC 4291 is basically a giant sphere of stars where the stars really aren't doing a whole lot. In many ways, it may not look all that special. However, the galaxy does contain a supermassive black hole that is much more interesting than anything else happening in the galaxy itself. Several techniques can be used to measure the masses of black holes at the centers of galaxies, and in the case of NGC 4291, it was possible to use the velocities of the stars within the center of the galaxy to estimate that the black hole's mass is 960 million times the mass of the Sun, give or take about 300 million. Unlike a lot of supermassive black holes in a lot of the galaxies that I've talked about in this podcast series, the black hole at the center of NGC 4291 is not doing anything special. However, that is not important. What is important is that the black hole is way too large for its galaxy. Astronomers have determined that the centers of most galaxies contain supermassive black holes and that the size of the supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy is linked to the size of the galaxy's bulge if the galaxy is a spiral or lenticular galaxy or the size of the galaxy itself if the galaxy is an elliptical galaxy in which case the elliptical galaxy can be thought of as all bulge and no disk. This means that whatever process leads to building up a galaxy's bulge also increases the size of the galaxy's central supermassive black hole. A spiral galaxy's bulge forms when one or more smaller galaxies merge with it. The orbits of the smaller galaxy usually get scrambled, thus producing a spherical ball of stars within the center of the spiral galaxy. When two spiral galaxies of the same size merge, the orbits of the stars from both galaxies get scrambled, resulting in the formation of a big ball of stars, or, in other words, an elliptical galaxy. The merging process may also cause interstellar gas clouds in the two galaxies to collide and collapse to form new stars, thus making the bulges larger. Interstellar gas will fall into the centers of these galaxies and into the black holes if the galaxies have them making the black holes larger. Additionally, if both merging galaxies contain supermassive black holes, those may also merge together to form one bigger supermassive black hole. Typically, the ratio of the mass of a galaxy's central black hole to the mass of the galaxy's bulge is around 1 to 500. In NGC 4291, however, the ratio is about 1 to 50. In other words, the black hole at the center of NGC 4291 is 10 times larger than what would be expected for a galaxy of its size. A group led by Ecos Bogdan published a paper in 2012 investigating this galaxy and another galaxy very similar to it. One of their initial thoughts was that NGC 4291 might have gravitationally interacted with another galaxy 
And if that other galaxy had, instead of merging with NGC 4291, simply stripped away most of its outer layers of stars, the stellar mass of NGC 4291 would have decreased, but the central supermassive black hole would not have been affected. However, Bogdan's group did not find any signs that NGC 4291 had been involved in this type of gravitational interaction, so that hypothesis was eliminated. This led to the conclusion that the one or more black holes that have gone on to form the black hole at the center of NGC 4291 started growing in one or more galaxies with very few stars, although potentially lots of dark matter. And after a few merger events, we ended up with an elliptical galaxy with relatively few stars, but a fairly big black hole. Bogdan's group also suggested that Based on the results for NGC 4291 and a few other exceptional galaxies, a galaxy's central supermassive black hole mass might not actually be linked to the mass of the galaxy's bulge, but actually to the mass of the galaxy's dark matter halo, which is basically a giant sphere surrounding the galaxy that is not made of normal matter and does not emit electromagnetic radiation. This relation between the mass of a galaxy's central black hole and the mass of a galaxy's dark matter halo has not been studied that much, but this relation is being actively investigated, and I look forward to learning more about whether more galaxies like NGC 4291 are out there and how they fit into this new relation. So that's my overview of NGC 4291 and the location on the Earth's surface corresponding to the position of NGC 4291 in the sky is located slightly under 440 kilometers north-northeast of Russia's Wrangel Island in the Arctic Ocean. Although we know that Russia has been a little aggressive in terms of claiming territory in the Arctic, I think this location is sufficiently far from Wrangel Island that they might have difficulty making such a claim. Also, it's on the opposite side of the international dateline from Russia. I might have passed over this location while traveling from Tokyo to Helsinki on a Finn Air flight in 2023 that was deliberately trying to avoid Russian airspace. Anyway, please do not avoid the website for this podcast at www.randomastronomicalobject.com, which you can visit to read information about the astronomical objects, view images of those astronomical objects, look up additional reference information, and send me random feedback. The audio was recorded and edited by George Bendo. The music is immersion by Sasha Endy, and the sound effects are from the Freesound Project at www.freesound.org. Thanks for listening. 